hey guys what's up welcome back to another episode of it's about everything from the title and thumbnail you already know what i'm going to build today so without wasting any more time let's start working the most important part of this build is the pvc pipe itself apart from that we will need some basic tools and some standard epoxy adhesive and epoxy putty to make sure that this project will not fail and I have chosen the right PVC pipe which is half inch here. I took a small sample of this pipe and tried to flatten it by hitting it over a gas stove which was successful but the edges seem to be charred a little bit which is unacceptable so I had to find another way to do it which you will see later so stick around. After determining what the length of the blade will be I used a hexo to cut it. To make a flat shade I need to open the pipe and to do so I made a cut on the side like so. After that repeat the process two more times and you will end up with three pipes. Moving on to the next step you will need an iron. Set the temperature to cotton which will not burn the pipe but make it soft so that you can shape it. Be careful here. You don't want blisters in your fingers. Keeping the slit towards your palm, gently roll the pipe back and forth. Don't worry, the entire pipe won't heat up. PVC is a bad conductor of heat. After few minutes, it will start becoming soft, so start flattening it ever so slightly. Continue the process until it becomes an oval shape. Once you reach this stage, sandwich this oval shaped pipe between two pieces of papers like so. And gently iron it. Applying gentle pressure, wiggle the iron back and forth until it becomes flat. Here I made a mistake doing it on the floor because the tiles were cold and so it was taking longer time. I would suggest using a wood plank that will not transfer the heat to the floor. Actually you will need two wood planks to sandwich the pipe in between and press it hard soon after hitting it so that it becomes flat. Here I used an old battery to do the same which is not recommended. As you can see here it's completely flat now and can be cut into the shape of a fan blade. I will follow the process two more times to make the other two. To make the hub I will use the same process of flattening it and then I will use another scrap pipe as a reference to draw a circle. I used my hexo to cut around the reference line and then later sanded it smooth. After the disc is completed I need to find the center point of this disc so I used a set square here. Now all I need to do is drill in the middle of the crosshair and it's completed which is easier said than done because I was using a hand drill screwdriver type thingy which didn't went through the middle as expected but it's hardly noticeable. I will balance it later anyway. Alright so here you can see I have made some markings on the hub disc for the individual blades which is 120 degrees apart from each other which I will cut into shape. I have also made a template for the blade shapes. After transferring the template shape into a blade, I have bolted all of them together with the templated blade on top. In this way, all the blades are going to be same. Working with my trustworthy hexo, it took me about half hour or so to cut it into its shape. I used a small hexo on the complicated corners if you are wondering how I did that. 
After that I used sandpaper to sand around the edges to make it smooth and even shaped. Alright so here you can see how it looks after it's shaped. The tiny screws really helped here by keeping it together and so the shape of the blades are even. I don't think I need to bother about the tiny holes and I think it will hardly make any difference but we'll see later. After numbering the blades and deburring the edges, I will move on to the next step which is gluing the blades with the hub but before that I need to set the pitch and aerodynamically curve the blades. I tried a new technique here with my SMD soldering blower as I can adjust the heat coming out of it and it did came out very well although I'm not sure about the pitch angle on the hub now but I can adjust it later. Keeping the blower on the lowest heat setting it just makes the plastic soft enough to work and I can also direct the heat to a particular spot with the right choice of nozzle. You can set the pitch after gluing the blades also which I found out later as epoxy can withstand a lot more heat than the PVC pipe can so it's possible. After that I will curve the blades using the same way. You don't need a reference to what angle the curvature should be, just do it, but only for the first blade. To make the second and third blade use the first one as reference, in this way all of them are going to be same. Finally, I can glue the blades on the hub. I'm using a standard epoxy adhesive here. I don't do sponsorship guys, you can use any epoxy here, Bontide, Fevitite, JB Well, any brand will do. The process of application is the same. Before gluing it, make sure you sand the gluing surfaces properly and there is no dust and debris left after you sanded it. Also don't touch the sanded surfaces with your fingers as oil and moisture from your finger will cause improper addition and might lead to a catastrophic failure while the fan is operating at a high rpm. Now the epoxy mixture was a bit thin so I added some talcum powder to make it thick enough and sticky. It gives the mixture a much more controllable and manageable consistency and once you clamp it down to cure, it will not make a mess with excess epoxy dripping. I was supposed to use chalk powder in place of talcum powder which is much cheaper but I didn't had any at that time. You can see here that the blade sticks onto the hub right away and remains in this position until I make sure about its alignment and clamp it down to cure. I'm using here a clothes pin, clothes bag or clothes clip whatever you call it in your region to clamp it down. I have a small trick to dry the epoxy first in just few minutes which is applying heat but here I can only apply a very low heat or the PVC pipe and the clothes clip both will melt. It will take a a bit more time like 40 minutes to fully cure it but it's faster than 8 hours in 26 degrees celsius. After it's fully cured I did try to pull it apart and it was really holding strong. I didn't show you previously how the talcum powder was mixed with the epoxy so here you will get a glimpse of how I mixed it. Alright so it's completed now, although the pitch of the blade seems to be fine but one of them is leaning backward and the other two are leaning forward and one blade is much heavier than the other two, clearly it needs some serious balancing. There are two ways of balancing a fan blade, 
one is centripetally balancing which is the mass of each rotating blade should be the same and is directed towards the center or axis of rotation and the other way of balancing it is aerodynamically in which the pitch of the blade should be same and it should not lean forward or backward like in my case one is leaning backward and the other two are leaning forward So I first decided to balance it by weight and to do so I used epoxy putty on the opposite side of the heavier blade. You might think I could have removed some material from the heavier blade in this way I need less epoxy putty to counterbalance it. Well it would work but on the other hand aerodynamically it might create new problems. I cannot remove too much material nor can I apply too much epoxy putty to balance it. I have to be somewhere in the middle. Here you can see I'm using a needle as an axis to balance it. That's because the needle is polished and the blade can move freely on it which is intended to see which side is heavier. I kept on adding little bit of epoxy putty and checking if it's balanced until I was absolutely satisfied with the results. Next I will mount the blades onto the motor permanently with epoxy putty or with the black stuff if you are wondering what's that. The reason for mounting it permanently is that the hub doesn't have a mounting bush or lock screw and no matter what I do the blade will wobble a little bit which will be hard to balance so my solution is once the epoxy putty glues the blade onto the motor shaft I will apply a little heat to correct the blade wobble and the blade tilt for gluing I have cleaned the motor shaft with sandpaper and I'm using a small plastic spacer in the shaft so that there is a clearance between the motor body and the fan blade the motor is a 12 volt RS775 motor which is very common and available everywhere First I applied a little bit of epoxy putty on the shaft and then placed the fan blade on it. After that I applied more epoxy putty on top of it and gave it a cone shape. I didn't apply any heat to fast cure it, instead I left it overnight to cure. Next day I did a trial run and it was vibrating a lot so I need to aerodynamically balance it. I again used my SMD rework hot air soldering station. I kept the heat to a minimum and just applied heat on the base of the blades. To make it soft enough to adjust, I adjusted it in two ways, the pitch and the forward and backward tilt. I also need to make the leading edge of the blade a little bit round, which will reduce drag, therefore reduce load on the motor. Alright guys it's finished, if you could remember I made this fan long back in another project and it's also made with PVC pipe, I just repurposed the fan with a new blade. Now it doesn't have any vibration and is running super smooth at full speed. The center nose cone is a bit off center but it's not creating any problem, the epoxy is holding good. Overall I'm satisfied with this project and I didn't expect it to be so good, fan blade that is made just by using a PVC pipe as the main material. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do consider subscribing my channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss an update. I'll see you soon.